Oh boy, here we go, the end of Evangelion movie. Now, if you're if you're kind of wondering what the hell this even is, it's kind of like an alternate ending. I guess if you didn't like episode 25 and 26, here's an alternative episode 25 and 26 in the form of two 45-minute episodes shoved together into the form of a movie. And episode 25 here is called Air or Love is Destructive. Yeah, I'm going with Love is Destructive just because I think that sounds a lot cooler. Sounds like a goddamn metal band. All right, so anyways, if you didn't like, I guess if you didn't like the original episode 25 and 26, this was pretty much to appease you. Personally, I think that End of Evangelion is a million times better than the original episode 25 and 26. Well, we got a lot to talk about. Let's get right into it. God, right off the bat. Based off this first scene alone, I think Shinji tries to drown himself. But he obviously couldn't go through with it. We're off to a great start. It gets a lot worse, trust me. There's gonna be a lot to talk about here. We're about five minutes in, and this is already the most fucked thing in this entire series. Now, if you've never seen the end of Evangelion, you're in for a treat. As you already know, Asuka's in a coma, and Shinji's extremely depressed because, well, he's hot off the heels of killing what could have been his last remaining friend as Kaoru. And Misato's extremely distant towards him, and Rei is no longer even the same Rei. All of his friends in school are gone because Japan's been getting fucked up pretty hard. So he goes to Asuka to try and wake her up so he can talk to her. This goes about as well as you could imagine, as she's unresponsive, but he's trying very hard to get her to wake up. A bit too hard, as he's pushing on her. God. Yeah, I can't show that part. No way. I'm not even going to risk it. It shows, so, her blouse, her hospital gown opens, revealing her chest. Shinji sees this, and we get a, a shot that pans around the room... And we hear Shinji's heavy breathing, and the door is fucking locked, and then you see the result of what Shinji's done on his hand. And that's it, that's the whole fucking scene, and Shinji says... I'm so fucked up. Yeah, there's your title card. Oh, mother of god. Now I'm like about to get up in arms and like, destroy Shinji's character here, because... This is kind of in character for him, as morally fucked as it is. This seems like something that he would do out of sheer desperation of, well, not knowing what else to fucking do. I'm not saying it's a good thing, and I sure as hell don't condone it, but I do understand why he did it. He's beyond help at this point. He's not in his right mind at all. And he is, well, as the Netflix dub would put it, he's the lowest of the low right now. I don't understand any hatred lobbed at Shinji just because of this part alone, because, well, he's, it's not like he spends the rest of the, the movie feeling great about what he does here. In fact, later on he tells Misato that he did something despicable to Asuka. So he, he obviously feels, this just makes him feel even worse, to be honest with you. I think, for some unknown reason, I, I think I'm going to equate this to the Joker movie, which... Let's just put it this way, Joker does a hell of a lot worse shit in that movie than Shinji does in this entire series. But, we still gravitate towards liking Joker because he's more sympathetic. That's the same thing with Shinji, or at least that's what I feel. I feel more sympathetic towards Shinji here because I know that, well, he's going through a lot of shit. And he's been going through a lot of shit throughout this entire series. And it's just all coming down on him right now in this moment. Again... I shouldn't have to say this or repeat myself. I don't condone this, and it is a pretty morally shitty thing to do. However, he it's not like he's sitting here gloating about it, now is he? Oh, okay, we're done with that, at least for now. Now, these beginning shots are pretty much just to show what all the, the cast is up to currently. Gendo's being confronted yet again by Sele, and this time he's pretty much just like, you know what, fuck you guys. And they're like, that's it, we're gonna destroy Nerve. And then Rey's doing like, whatever. She broke Gendo's glasses, kind of signifying that she's no longer bonded to him at all. She has no feeling towards Gendo. Uh, Shinji's, well, we already know what happened to Shinji. Uh, I find this shot depressing though. He's sitting there listening to his Walkman, except the fucking battery for the first time in the entire series is dead. And he can't even give enough of a fuck to charge the damn thing. Now that's fucking depressing. 
But then shit starts going down. Like, Misato's got a gun. The warnings are going off. Fiyutsuki looks mildly concerned. Ritsuko is let out of whatever she's being contained at. Somewhere a nerve, obviously, as she enters the Magi system like she did in the earlier episode. What's she doing in there? We'll find out later. I love how even in this dire time, these two are just like, eh, it's whatever. Turns out that the Japanese military is launching a full-scale assault on the Geofront and Nerve. They send in some agents that get in side Nerve pretty fucking easily. You'd think that a, a giant facility that houses the gigantic Evangelions that are worth trillions of fucking dollars would be a little bit more heavily secured. Though I guess this is probably why they aren't. Misato knows that they're after the Ava pilots and they want to kill them, obviously, so they can't get in the Evangelions. So she tells them to put a comatose Asuka inside Unit 2, inside the lake of the Geofront. But then Gendo just kind of fucks off. And then Fiyutsuki's like, Yo, tell Yui Car- I said, hey, what's up? As it turns out, the people who are defending Nerve Headquarters suck. They're getting destroyed, so Misato orders Bacolite to be re released into the facility, which is basically this liquid shit that turns into, I don't know, rock or something? I don't know, it's weird. And she notices that Shinji is nowhere to be found. Turns out he's hiding under a stairwell. So she gets a fucking Glock and goes to hunt him down. I love how Hyuga just casually whips out a pistol and he's like, uh, business as usual. Where the fuck do you Elba get this fucking gun at? Then he gives a pistol to Maya who doesn't know how to use it and doesn't really want to. But Aoba tells her to suck it up. And she makes this face. She makes a lot of weird faces in this movie. Here's your second title card. Aside from the first shot she's in, I'm pretty sure Ray is naked in this entire fucking movie. So this is gonna be difficult. Gendo's like, alright Ray, let's go end the fucking world. Nerve still sucks at defending itself, and then Shinji's found by these three jack-offs who could've just killed him right there, but one of them gets capped and then Misato kind of runs towards them, and these stormtrooper-looking motherfuckers shoot their machine guns at her, a woman running right towards them. They miss every shot, and she gets up close and kills both of them. It's okay, because Shinji's already as traumatized as one person can be. Misato spends about half this fucking movie dragging Shinji around and yelling at him. Probably not the best idea to a boy in his mindset. Shit goes real crazy as they drop fucking into mines on the Geofront. That was a little much. So now the Geofront's completely open. Misato does a big fat exposition dump all over Shinji who's barely listening, telling him about how humanity is the final angel and they're at war with themselves because of course they are. They're the reason Adam destroyed half of the fucking world or whatever. Kinda cliche if you ask me. I, I don't like this kind of exposition dump. Like, why did she just tell him all this out of the blue like this? Why did he, why did she think that he really needed to know this? Unfortunately, the Japanese military find out where Ava Unit 2 is, and so they start dropping bombs into the fucking water, which causes Asuka to wake up and start freaking the fuck out. Asuka keeps chanting that she doesn't want to die before having an epic epiphany. <laughs> It kind of reminds me of the first Hell Train that Shinji had where he saw a glimpse of his mother, except this is Asuka's mom instead, and Asuka also looks like a, a crude drawing of herself, which is kind of neat. And then she reaches for her mother's hand before her mother grabs her and pulls her up, which causes Unit 2 to awaken and go absolutely apeshit bananas. <laughs> Obviously, the military does not stand a chance in hell now that Asuka has her confidence and is now starting to actually win for once. I gotta say, this is one of my favorite moments in the entire series of Evangelion. I know that it's not like some epic battle involving an Ava and an Angel or something. It's literally just an Ava unit stomping a mud hole in some humans, but it's fucking cool. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> I love how she didn't even use her AT field to block these missiles. She literally just tanks both of them. I mean, she punches one of them. She could have punched both of them, but she just decides to headbutt the first one. I don't know why, but it's hilarious. Misato and Shinji learn that Asuka's out of her coma and up there kicking ass. 
Unfortunately, the military do manage to destroy the umbilical cable, however, that doesn't really slow Asuka down at all. Sweet Jesus. Yeah, there's no way that if I was in the military, I'd even make an attempt against this giant robot. Sele is pissed because Asuka's ruining their plans for human instrumentality. So they decide to send out the, the bird boys. The, the finished product. The mass production Avas. There's nine of them, and they're all outfitted with the Kauru, I don't know, dummy system, I guess. Now, it's not confirmed in the series itself, but apparently the Kauru dummy system will allow them to do absolutely nothing but still be beloved by fans. Also, they all have these big fucking swords, and they can all fly. Sounds like a really fair fight to me. Fusky's like, holy shit, they released the, the mass production Avis. Are they really gonna do human instrumentality right fucking here? The Bird Boys finally land and surround Asuka. However, she's back to her cocky self as usual, and she says that she only has two and a half, somewhere around there, two and a half minutes or something like that, to beat all nine of them. She says that she'll have time to spare. Shinji is still moping around, and Asuka decides to go ahead and attack one of the mass production Avas. Well, that was pretty fucking easy. They didn't put up much of a fight. I mean, you got that big fucking sword, but yeah, just let her crush your fucking face, I guess. Uh, this one, I'm pretty sure this is one of the two that end up getting absolutely annihilated. Like, it, it's this one that gets ripped in half, and then the one later that gets cut in half. They don't come back, I'm, I'm pretty sure. There's two missing. Also, I don't think that Asuka knows that these guys have the S2 engine, which will pretty much make them nearly invincible unless she damages them beyond repair. Which means that she'll have to destroy their core, or I guess just rip them in fucking half, or rip their limbs off or something. That would probably help. However, she doesn't realize that, I don't think, so she doesn't really aim for the core on any of these guys. Now, wait a minute. Does... Fiyutsuki knows that they all have the S2 engine in them, which would, it would make sense if Maya and Ilba and Hyuga also all know this. Asuka probably wouldn't know this, because she's been in a fucking coma. So, why the fuck wouldn't they get on the comm and be like, Yo, Asuka, you gotta kill these guys by destroying their core, that's the only way. Instead, no, they just fucking watch this. Like, you know that these guys aren't gonna be dead after all this damage, right? Like, you gotta tell her to destroy the fucking core. This is just like that fucking episode of Dragon Ball Z, where Goku blasts the shit out of a cell with that big-ass Kamehameha, and everybody's cheering, even though they all know that Cell's just going to regenerate. You knew that, but you didn't tell Goku that, you idiots! Maybe I'm all- maybe I'm- maybe I'm entirely wrong about this, but I- I feel like that's what is going on here. Well, anyway, this guy here, he gets fucked pretty hard. Misato's still dragging Shinji around, trying to get him to Unit 1. However, she ends up getting shot by some of those military dudes. And the military dudes are like, well, we weren't able to kill him, but we're gonna bomb this whole area anyway, so they're all gonna be fucking killed. It's pretty obvious at this point that Misato's not going to make it. It sucked the first time I watched it, but... After re-watching this again, uh, I don't really care, because I kind of stopped liking Misato about halfway through. I don't really know why. I'm not gonna feel sorry for you! If you don't like feeling pain, then you can just sit here and let them kill you! Can't really put my finger on it, I, I just don't really know why. Crying isn't going to solve anything either! Because yelling at him is just so much more effective, I guess. Misato has a lot of mood swings here. I don't know if it's because she's bleeding out and nearly dead or what, but... Then she does what I think is even worse than the hospital scene. Yes, I'm saying that right fucking now. She fucking kisses him and tells him that when he gets back, they'll finish the rest of it. Alright, now here's why it's bad. It's not for the reason that you think it is. Now, the age of consent in Japan is 13. Shinji is 14. Now look, I'm not saying that I agree with it. But Japan, they do stuff differently, okay? I'm not gonna argue with it. Now, I've heard a lot that Misato commits some hefty, uh, P-word here because she kisses an underage boy. However, legally, he's not underage. Not in Japan, at least. Now, personally, again, I don't agree with it, but it is what it is, and that's how life goes, so deal with it. 
The thing I have an issue with is that she's so fucking manipulative here. Now look, I know that this is a desperate situation. She's trying her damnedest to get Unit 1 to go out there and save Asuka and prevent human instrumentality and all that shit. However, if she had just taken the time to make Shinji not so fucked up in the head throughout this entire series, maybe take him to a goddamn therapist, maybe give him a hug every now and again, make him feel like you're his actual fucking legal guardian instead of half the time you don't even give a shit about him because you're too busy getting fucked by Kaji and then feeling bad when Kaji gets killed. But now, now that we're on the precipice of human extinction by turning into fucking orange juice or whatever, now you, now you use sex to try and get this fucking messed up kid to go up and pilot a giant fucking robot that he doesn't want to fucking pilot and he hasn't wanted to pilot throughout this entire series. Great idea, Misato. And you wonder why I don't fucking like her anymore. Like, my first viewing, I thought Misato was a great character. I still think she's a, a well-written character, but I think she's also a piece of shit. Now, I also understand that she really wasn't meaning what she says by they'll have sex, basically, because she knew that she was going to die here. She was literally just doing this the whole time to try and get Shinji to get on the elevator and go pilot Unit 1. Can it get any more manipulative than that? Anyways, Misato's bleeding out, and she asks Kaji if she did the right thing. Uh, personally, I don't think you fucking did, but that's just me. Also, before Shinji got on the elevator, Misato gave him her little cross necklace that her father gave her. And uh, I think it comes to realize that Misato is actually fucking dead now. Man, these guys ain't putting up much of a fight, are they? Damn, these guys are jobbers. For God's sake, aren't they supposed to put up a fight or something? Anyway, back with Gendo and Rei, they're standing in front of a Lilith that has new legs. Looking good, Lilith. But then a wild Ritsko appears and points a gun at Gendo. Now, hey, look at that! He actually, they actually put up a fight. Maybe these guys are, maybe these guys mean business now. They were just warming up. Mm, I take that back. You know that shoulder thing's pretty cool. Unit Two is the only one that seems to be able to shoot spikes out of its little shoulder thingies. And I kind of like it. I wish they used it more throughout the series. To my knowledge, I think they only use it like a grand total of twice here, where it's somewhat effective, and uh, in the the second rebuild movie where it's, well, not as effective. Ritsuko, it turns out, has programmed the Magi system to self-destruct if they all vote for it. And so she's about to, to cause all of Nerve headquarters to blow the fuck up. However, her mother loves Dick more than her own daughter, and even in the afterlife, she fucks her over. But then Gendo has some pretty epic words for Ritsuko. The truth is... I guess Ritsuko's, uh, quote, dead. Maya's still watching the fight upstairs, and it turns out that Asuka's got about 45 minutes left to defeat the last two. Okay, I think she has this under control. She even has time to, to give Shinji a nice jab, because apparently he can't get in Unit 1 because it's covered in fucking backlight. Asuka pretty much calls Shinji a bum, and it's like over the intercom, so that just kind of furthers the, the point that they could have all contacted her and been like, aim for the fucking cores, but whatever. So Asuka has about 10 minutes left to spare, so it looks like she's got this in the bag until somebody throws this sword out of nowhere. Who threw that? That sounds familiar. Where have I heard that before? Anyways, it turns into a replica Lance of Longinus, which I guess has kind of the same properties as the original one, where it's able to rip through AT fields with ease. Asuka probably could have moved out of the way of this because her AT field did block it for a short time, so she probably could have jumped out of the way of it, but I guess she just decides to take it to the fucking face. It wasn't a missile, so I don't think you could survive that one. Her operation time was pretty much up, but it only went up after the lance hit her, so 
She had time to move out of the way. I don't know why she didn't. I guess she was just shocked because she couldn't figure out who the fuck threw the damn thing. Join the club. I'm still confused after two years of trying to figure this shit out. Maybe it's the one that lost its leg, but why does Maya act so shocked when she learns that the mass production Avas are standing up? If they were all knocked down, why is she shocked now? One of them still should have been standing. She should have been like, Asuka, that's not the last one. You gotta take down that one that you cut its foot off of. So obviously that one didn't throw the fucking thing either. So who threw the damn thing? So anyway, Asuka loses her fucking eye, and uh, Unit 2's down for the count, and then all the mass production Avas finally decide to get up and actually do something now. Maya's like, oh, we're boned. The Bird Boys get back up. I love how one of them still has the spikes in his head. He looks like the emo one out of the group. And then they all swoop in and start ripping Unit 2 apart and tear out its intestines and whatnot. Of course, this causes Maya to throw up. So as we can see here, I, I count just seven of them. So I think... I think, indeed, the ones that got cut in half are the ones that are down for the count permanently. Uh, speaking of down for the count, Unit 2's looking in pretty bad shape. I'm thankful it didn't happen, but for continuity's sake, why is Asuka's intestines not ripped out here? I mean, if she's still synced up enough to, with Unit 2 to have her fucking eye cut out, why the hell, if Unit 2 got its intestines ripped out, why didn't she? She's just acting like her stomach kind of hurts. I guess I'm kind of thankful that that didn't happen, though. Gotta give it some credit, Unit 2's not going down without a fucking fight. It's got a spear in its face and its intestines are ripped out, but it's still fucking going berserk. That's some crazy shit. Also, Asuka's not wanting to go down without a fight. She's still trying to get Unit 2 to move, even though she's got a fucking hole in her head where her eye used to be. These guys are like, oh, we're boned. In a normal anime, the protagonist, Shinji, would have burst out of Nerve Headquarters in Unit 1 and destroyed all the mass production Avas and saved Asuka's life and ended human instrumentality. But this isn't a normal anime. Asuka is, quote, dead. Imagine killing off one of your main characters in the last fucking movie of the whole series. That's kind of insane. Especially after said character gets some heroic moments right before it happens. Kind of insane. Shinji hears about what happens over the intercom, but he's all, I mean, obviously unable to do anything. That is until Unit 1 just now decides to fucking wake up and break out of the Bakelite. Kind of a dick move on Yui Ikari's part. I mean, she waits until Asuka gets, quote, killed before she finally gets her ass up and then gets moving. It's a bit too fucking late now. Gendo, I guess, senses that Unit 1 is awake, and he's like, Oh yeah, it's all coming together. For like the 15th billionth fucking time in the series, Nerve HQ gets fucking blown up again. These dudes are shitting their britches because they see the Unit 1 burst out of the fucking giant pyramid looking like a damn demon. Seriously, why does it look like this in this situation? What the fuck's going on here? I guess, I guess it's reacting to Shinji's state of mind. I don't really know. Who cares? It looks awesome. Then Shinji looks up and sees the destroyed remains of Unit 1 being carried by the mass production Avas and realizes that Asuka is fucking, quote, dead. <laughs> and that's the end of part one, I guess. Wow, what a way to end it. I guess it's a good thing part two starts up immediately after the fucking credits for some unknown reason. Why are there credits? I understand it's a movie and it's in the form of two episodes, but it's a movie. Why couldn't they just not have credits? Like, you can have the two be continued, I guess, but it's kind of weird. I like it, though. So, uh, this episode, I, I guess I can call it an episode, right? I don't really know. This fucking part one of this movie, oh boy, it's insane, isn't it? I mean, literally, the first five minutes of the movie are just fucked beyond belief. We get the hospital scene. That's real great. Uh, this is what I like to call the action-oriented part of the movie. The second part is more like the Hell Train stuff, like the, the trippy weird shit that Evangelion is really known for. This, it didn't, not, not too much of it in this, ep in this first part here. They saved the, the best for last, I guess, if, if you're into that kind of trippy, weird shit. I like the action in this part, though. It's fucking great. It's probably the best in the entire original series. I mean, there's no probably about it. It, it. To me, it definitely fucking is. Just Asuka stomping around destroying the military is worth the price of admission, if you ask me. 
I mean, shit, they waited, they waited a while to kill off a bunch of main characters. Ritsuko's dead, Misato's dead, Asuka's dead. I mean, quote, dead on all three of those. They're not actually fucking dead permanently, but you, you know what I mean. Like, if you didn't see part two yet, you would know that, but it's kind of crazy to kill off three main characters in literally the last fucking movie in the way that you do. It's, it's just, it's unheard of. I feel like Asuka's character arc is the one that gets the the most focus here and it's a good way to wrap her character arc up i mean she didn't get a, a w like she really needed but you know what i think she did good enough it was a fucking nine on one handicap match she fucking nuked two of them so two of them aren't even getting back up now and she did beat the shit out of pretty much all of them so you know what i, I count that as a w fuck you also her moment destroying the military was just 100% perfection. It was absolutely cathartic. That's what it is. We needed to see that from Asuka. Asuka does have a few moments in the next part, but it's mostly to play off Shinji. Like, the next part is very Shinji-oriented, as it should be. He's, his character arc is still incomplete, and God, he desperately needs it to be complete. So, I guess we'll wait until part two then, now won't we? As for this part, I fucking love it. I think it's amazing. 9.5 out of 10. Just for the action alone, I'm fucking sold on this one. And you get some of the most craziest fucking moments in the whole series. Asuka getting, quote, killed. Misato getting, quote, killed. Ritsuko getting, quote, killed. And the hospital scene. It's just, wow. What a great, what a fucking family-friendly movie. I wish that I could turn back time. Cause now the guilt is all mine